Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Um, I just got to watching Vitalik on the Deconomy. Deconomy, talking about the next 12 months of uh, Ethereum. Kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting, uh, um, a very interesting <laughs> um, video if you want to watch it. I would look at the very first comment. I thought it was pretty funny. There's a lot of funny people in crypto. They make a lot of funny comments and I thought it was pretty funny. But anyway, I've, I've always thought a lot of Vitalik. I think he's a very smart guy. Uh, he's probably one of the best mathematicians in, in uh, crypto. Maybe better than Dan Lammer even. I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody. He's the Michael Jordan of mathematics. There's no doubt about it. But I always thought it was pretty interesting because um, Vitalik has bought into the proof of work concept. And I always thought it was funny because you got a problem. Sorry about the motorcycle. Uh, you got a problem. You got a problem with. Uh, you got to put some information on the internet, but you got to do it in such a way that the person that puts the information on the internet doesn't have an interest in the information. They don't. They don't slant the information. They don't change the information. They don't take advantage of the information. So you got to figure out how to put this information on the internet, but not have the person that's doing that have an interest in it. So what's this? What's this? What you have to come up with? You have to solve that problem. What's the problem? How do you solve it? Well, I think it's really interesting because the people that are dealing with this problem are mathematicians and computer scientists. So their, their answer is, do a math problem. You know, problem solved. I mean, do a math problem. You put so much energy in doing the math problem that, uh, you know, you spend so much energy, time, and computing and all this other stuff that by the time you put the math problem up that you don't have, you know, you, you're unbiased. You, you, you've got a stake in the math problem, solving math problems. So now you're not interested in the uh, content of the blockchain, of the block information, so you problem solved. So a guy like Vitalik, I mean, he's a mathematician. He, uh, he understands math. He's one of the best in the, in, in the, in probably in the world, you know. He's the Michael Jordan of mathematics. Nobody slam dunks on, on Vitalik. But now you got the proof of work problem, and now you got scalability. So now Vitalik goes into this big, long thing with Casper and Chardin and Plasma, and you can see he's, he's frustrated with it. I mean, when you're that brilliant, sometimes you just, uh, you have an Achilles heel, and maybe the Achilles heel is he's uh, like the chess master that got himself into a position where he can't think of a way to get out of it. I mean, he's thinking four or five moves ahead, and he just really can't figure it out. And he's just such a perfectionist and such a brilliant man that sometimes uh, that stuff starts to play with your brain. Trust in, and sometimes there isn't an answer to the solution. I mean, <clears throat> I think there is an answer to the solution, but I don't. I think at this point it's probably really hard to come up with one. But anyway, <clears throat> that's not the point of my video tonight. I don't really want to keep on talking about it, but it is interesting, you know, that uh, the scalability problem is a real problem. And I believe EOS solves that scalability problem. And I think Dan Larimer is a more mature, um, older, uh, person and understands a little bit more about the way the world works and understands that the only way you can really solve that problem is you have to have delegated proof of stake. You have to be able to uh, put your put your faith in other people's hands as far as being able to record the information. You have to be able to have trusted third parties record the information. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. How you doing? What's up, man? Hey, not much. Video? Yeah, I'm making a video on cryptocurrencies, if you know what that is, yeah, like Bitcoin and stuff like that. Is. Yeah, yeah. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Are you doing good in it? Or oh, yeah, yeah, no, we do a lot. Bitcoin. Yeah, we do a lot. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. You're in my video now. I must get Bitcoin. All right, buy Bitcoin. Buy EOS. Buy Ethereum. <laughs> buy everything. Hey, buddy. Hey, thanks. Nice to talk to you. All right. He can even say all right, say it again, Bitcoin for everybody. All right, thanks, nice talking with you. So back to my point of my video. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of fun walking around Carlsbad because you see a lot of people. If you ever get a chance to vacation, this is not a bad place to come. You know, at least consider it because it's a great, great location. So anyway, I was talking about uh, the proof of work, proof of stake concept. And I think Dan Larimer is a little bit more mature about that as far as figuring out a way to, to be able to record his blocks independent of a th with a third party that's not uh, interested in the transaction uh, delegated proof of stake um, of voting but there is another way that I think we're eventually going to come to on the internet and that's the way of machine learning machine learning 
Uh, machine learning is a fascinating area, and it's, it's being done today. But it's not being done, it's being done by centralized, centralized uh, 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 servers. So in other words, people put information on the internet, but they don't, that's proprietary, and they don't want to share it. So the machine lear learning is very limited. I mean, if you're a computer scientist, you, you remember back the very first day of uh, your very first computer science class, the very first thing we talked about in computer science was garbage in, garbage out. Uh, talked about it in, eco uh, in economics, too talked about it in almost everything garbage in garbage out you got that problem with machine learning today if you have a machine that's very limited in what data you have available for it it's not going to be very intelligent but if you have unlimited data for that machine to learn it's going to become very intelligent I believe one day the the, the entire blockchain could be run by machine because of the algorithm and the conditions of the algorithm to set it up to be so complete that the machine can do everything. Now, in, in today's world, I believe that the machine, the machine learning is something that the blockchain could be unmatched in. I mean, the ability to put information, have it somewhat proprietary, but still shared with a lot of machines. I, I'm, I'll just give you an, uh, an analogy here. Give me, give you a, a way this could work. Uh, you could, you, on your cell phone, I mean, your cell phone could literally record all the information and take that information in, where you go, uh, locations, uh, restaurants, shopping, uh, searches that you do, um, uh, people that you interact with. Take all that information, that machine learning, take all that, put it into to some sort of a, a, you know, a place, and then have machines be able to access that information and be able to come up with um, a future, uh, a, a, you know, a, be able to predict the future for you, be able to be to pre-predict where you're going to go, what you're going to do, things you're going to have. I mean, all these different things can be put into a database, and by that database or by that uh, blockchain, things could be learned by the machine. This is a very interesting place where we could be going as far as the blockchain is concerned. We could be going into machine learning. Machine learning, and it's being done today, but the problem with it being done today is it's being done by third parties, third parties that may not always have our best interest in mind, and also being able to use that information against us, like in voting, pre-predicting voting, or by using it in a way like, I believe the Russians maybe, could, they were saying could have been used in the election. Getting information, pre-predicting how people are gonna vote, pre-predicting. So this is machine learning, and this is what the blockchain could be used for in the future. Uh, right now, the best we have is delegated proof of stake, like I said, with EOS. That's why I'm such a strong believer in EOS, is because to be able to record the information, decentralized in a third party's hands, the best thing we got today is delegated proof of stake and the system of governance of which EOS is doing. Uh, unlike the you know, proof of work, which is not quite there yet. Just can't do proof of work today because it just it, it expends too many resources. It's, it's like doing math problems. It's like I, I would think of delegated proof of work, a proof of work, um, not delegated proof of work, but proof of work like going to college. We go to college, we do a lot of work, and then when we get out, we get a job. Sometimes the college doesn't have anything to do with the job, but we need that learning, or we need to go through that process before people believe in what we can do. You gotta go through the, the proof of work. You gotta go through the, the four years of getting an education before you can get hired, because at that point, then people believe in us, and people believe what we can do. That's all, almost like the proof of work. You gotta do the math problem before you can get to uh, have the reward. Like I said, it's interesting to me because people that develop this or people that come up with the idea are mathematicians and, um, and computer scientists. And now we have people that are taking it a step further with the delegated proof of stake, the voting and the governance. Very interesting. But I think in the future, they will resort back to machine learning. And I think that the machine learning will be the ultimate third party arbiter, the ar ultimate third party that makes the decisions. But still with some human intervention. I don't think it can ever be complete machine learning. I think that would be a mistake. So anyway, been a long video, rambled on a little bit, but it's, uh, the machine learning thing is something very interesting to me, and I'd like to talk about it even more in the future because it will affect everything we do, machine learning. How machines learn and how machines predict what we're going to do. Very interesting topic, and how it can be done on the blockchain. Thanks for watching.